<laughs> there we go. Can't see it too well, but anyway, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Where are you? Are you Karen? Yes. I'm yes. Karen. And you're Runa? Apparently. I'm Carl. <laughs> no. Who are you? I am Runa. Lizette. Lizette? Yes. If you're, yeah, Lizette. I keep saying Lizette. Lisette, but how do you say that in Norwegian? Lisette. Lisette, because the TH is like a T. Yeah. And the Americans want to go S. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with light. No, because Lise in Norwegian means light. Yeah. Oh. In, and, I'm assuming it means um, Lee as in the side of the mountain where you don't get the wind. Yeah, it's uh, set, oh, yeah. set there with shelter, actually. Yeah, like the Lee. And then your first name, obviously, is because you're full of runes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pronouncing your name horribly wrong. I pronounce it like a girl, but it's a boy's name. How do you pronounce it? Rune. Rune. I want to say Runa, but that's a girl. No, no, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Rune. Rune. Because the E in Norwegian on the end is spoken and it's pronounced E. Eh. Yeah. In English, it's silent. Yeah. So what it is, is. does it actually mean? It still means the runes, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it comes from that, yes. Yeah. And then you, Carl, have a name that we actually have quite a bit of in English, but Ardal <laughs> um, with two A's. That means either a uh, valley with a small river, uh, like a stream, yeah, uh, or a valley that is full of a type of trees that's called Ur in Norwegian. I don't know the uh, English. Name, but you but... don't pronounce it Ardal. No, you pronounce it Ordal. Ordal. And it's the old, uh, the, the old writing when we were uh, trying to be Danish. Okay, can go closer. Yeah, because A A is the same as A with a circle over it. Yeah, and double A is the same as an O. Yeah. My full name is Karl Kora Ordal, yeah. and the full meaning with Karl means uh, free man, as in not a slave. Kora means curly haired. Yeah, that and doesn't Ordal. seem to have worked for you. <laughs> means uh, uh, valley with a uh, small river. So um, I am the free curly haired man from the valley with a small river. Yeah. yeah. And so you've got the straight hair and you've got the curly hair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And there then might have been the switch around. But so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then mine is Karen, but it's spelled Karen, which is a Scandinavian way. Yeah. What that means, I have no flipping clue, but in... Well, in the United States, we can say Karen or Karen. My mom just can't spell, so we say Karen. And then there's Biyum, which is a married name. Biyum, does that mean of the city? Maybe. Good name. It's the Norwegian one. My original name was Basset. Not very Norwegian. And as far as I know, it means a dog. No, <laughs> it doesn't. There's a Basset hound, but the Basset hound has one T, and my oh, last yeah. name had two. But yeah. now I'm Biyum, B-Y-O-M, which I like to say means bring your own mead, bring your own man, bring your own mate, yeah. bring your own mom. I don't know. <laughs> But apparently it means of the city B. Yeah, yeah. Home. Anyway, so there's history there. Uh -huh. Heidi's here, Lisa. Uh -huh, Lisa, Lisa, did you hear what I said? Yeah. No, Lisa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Charlotte is here. She made it just in time. She's been trying to catch us every time. Yeah. Uh, Andrea is here. Andrea, not Andrea, but Andrea. And she's made, she's making a hat. Mm -hmm. That's the one I was showing you with the pictures of that she's just starting. But it's starting to resemble a shape, which is good. As if it's starting to go, if it's starting to go this way, so it's a little too short for you, then you just need to increase a little more. But otherwise, but stop increasing as soon as it fits. And it doesn't matter if it gets too big because you can increase, you can make it smaller here, and then you have like a slouchy hat, which a lot of people yeah. want. And if it's too narrow here and points up, then you can still increase, and it just makes kind of like a cone hat, and people want those too. You have a whole uh, race of nisses here that yeah, wear those yeah, hats. Yeah. Uh, nisses are gnomes. Uh, so keep going. Uh, Kathleen Egan is here. Hello, everyone from Chile, Connecticut. Ah, I think we've seen Kathleen Egan here before, but it might be in a while. How cold is it in Connecticut? And I'll tell you how cold it is here. How cold is it here? I don't know. Without the Viking six, thermometer? Six. <laughs> yeah. I you think, think it's, it's six? I'm going to guess minus two. Yeah, minus six, of course. Oh, minus six, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we forgot to make it. Runa is right. Shit. <laughs> Did you check? No. You didn't? I just uh, feel it. 
Mm. So there you go, minus six Celsius, it's 25 degrees Celsius and where Prime Genesis is in Western Australia. That's right, that's um, Prime Bunny on uh, Instagram though. So we have one from Australia. What time is it over there? It's That's literally the other oh, side of yeah, the world. It is. it is literally the other side of the world from here. And they're in the middle of summer. Yeah. I envy them. Yeah, right so 25 degrees Celsius, that's about as hot as it gets here yeah, in the yeah, summer. Yeah. Doesn't get much hotter than that, otherwise we'd be dying. Mm. Andoranda, Adirondacks has the exact opposite. Susan Youngman says it's minus 25 C there, so it's even colder where she is. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, Kathleen Egan is pointing out to something, eight, minus 8 degrees Fahrenheit with wind chill. So that's much lower than zero. Zero is 32. Yeah. But what she's, when she's referring to wind chill, this is something that we um, measure in Duluth because of the lake effect. Yeah, yeah. So it's never as cold as the air is. It's as cold as it's blowing for. So when she says her face is freezing, then she's not wrong. We used to have yeah, yeah, yeah. freezer burn. No, what do we call that? Wind chill. Wind, wind burn. Frostbite. No, not frostbite. That's no different. But windburn is you'd, you'd be just like going skiing with uh, oh. your face would be, as you, when you get to the bottom yeah. of the hill, your face would be all like blown. Yeah. So that was a huge thing. Random AFP, hello. And Stein Hilger is here again. Regina's back. Regina, did you get dressed up, make popcorn and tea? I have high expectations. She says, Karen means pure and unsullied. That's right. Did you hear that? Mm. <laughs> I am pure and unsullied. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> I think Carl knows a thing or two. Can prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, then uh, I was just reading, catching up a little bit in chat there. Uh, Heidi says there's snow. Oh. Har snur de stude snur shouting it. Why do uh, I think like snow wenches when I read that? Yeah, it's right. So they got like cold snow wenches falling from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? So they say. Really? When it's big snowflakes. Yeah. Snow shedding it. Yeah. I don't know why they call it snow shedding mm. it, but they do. I like that one. Big angry snow women falling yeah. from yeah. the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Windburn, use chapstick and lips and calendula balsam. I've got some over here. Anyway, um, what did you do this week? Rena? Nothing. You played with my car. Yeah, I'm fixing your car. Which turns out to be much worse than I thought. No, 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 no. But luckily, you know a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just changed brake shoes. That's all. Yeah, so I'll be eating this week as well then. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, no worries. It's not, that, it's not as expensive as in a workshop. No, that's uh, you're yeah. saving me a lot more there yeah. than a lot because I thought it was only two uh, two breaks, but yeah. all four need to be replaced. Yeah, <laughs> that was the bad news I got earlier today. No, so I owe you a big time for that. Mm. Can I interest you in a pair of socks at some point? No, but <laughs> Damn remember it. I borrowed your car a whole summer. Oh, that's right. You owe me. No, we don't. We're even. <laughs> 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 what did you do this week, Carl? Other than entertain me. I don't remember doing anything else. <laughs> you gained quite a few levels on your game. Yeah, I've been slapping my hyena around in the corner next to us. You might need to explain slapping your hyena. <laughs> Sounds like something completely, <laughs> completely different. Yeah. I've been slapping my hyenas. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to explain? For the <laughs> it's a game. Yes, and you can have time, time hyenas. They are the big ones are super efficient. You don't really have to have tigers and wolves and bears and that yeah. sort of thing. Hyena does nicely. That's uh, Conan Exiles. Yeah. You're playing, yeah. So they're your pets, basically. I would can... rather have a pet hyena than a pet wolf, actually. They are much, really? much cooler. Yeah? Are they easier to control? Uh, it's not I don't very think biking. so, maybe. I don't think either of them are particularly easy to control. No, uh, well, maybe, maybe. The hyena is probably much cheaper to feed. Yeah. Because it can feed itself with yeah, all it the neighbor eat, cats? It can eat anything, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's a myth, but it's been said so many times that their stomach acid can dissolve a nail. Yeah. Couldn't the humans? Uh, theoretically, but over a horrendously long time. It just can't dissolve McDonald's. No. 
No, <laughs> I saw Super Size Me. <laughs> um, but it is winter now, right? It's right, Charlotte. I actually like this. I like the winter and I like the snow. We still have snow on the ground here. So that makes yeah. me very happy, except for the snow fell quite nicely on top of ice, hmm. which doesn't have Carl very happy. No. Because <laughs> no, he's slipping and sliding. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he it's, it's not very easy to walk. Outside. No. Especially See, actually, in the village, there's a lot of um, ice. That's exactly it. It's yeah. the village. You have to try to walk in a new place or yeah, something, but yeah. you can't see underneath where it's packed and where it's not. Mm -hmm. And then you start working leg muscles or hip muscles that you haven't worked in a long time and you're being real sore from walking like this. Yeah. Mm. Um, let's see what else is there. Lyra is here. Shattered her phone, though, so it'll be real quiet until I get a new one. It does it, my screen is broke on mine. Is that we, could, we could form a support group. Uh, random AFP race. I decided what to make with the spiral with this yarn that she spun. Um, she might try a two color spiral hat. Oh, do it! I love those. Uh, Prime Bunny just made one. Prime Genesis up there. Uh, you can see it on the Facebook group and probably on his Instagram too. If he links it, it looks really good. There's a tutorial I have for those as well. Um, Dre played Diablo 3 on Nintendo Switch last night. First time trying to game with a new puppy. She slept between us and ignored all the cords. It's kind of like when you're gaming and I try to give you a hug. Yeah, you and the cat. <laughs> and the cat. The cat tries to close the computer and you try to hug me. It's impossible to game. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you can't move because the sleeping cat shall not be disturbed. It's like unwritten rule. Mm. You must not. Okay. Rune, a question for you. What do you do for Gudvangen? Because none of us, well, I look like a Viking, but you guys don't. I uh, guide here. But you only guide in English? And Norwegian. And Norwegian. And yeah, English and Norwegian. English and Norwegian, yeah. And Trondorsk. But you have a way of delivering your guided tour like a guilty um, a guilty little kid that just got caught raiding another country. And you're not necessarily sorry. No, no <laughs> maybe not. What's your favorite part? That's my favorite part of your tour anyway, though. And we, we raided this village. Maybe. <laughs> no. What did you, uh, it's then that when you buy the boat, you tell a story or something. Uh, that sounds, uh, I don't remember. No, something like uh, the Vikings raided everywhere or whatever, or they didn't, I don't know, maybe they raided a little too. What do you say when you're at the boat? What do you talk about? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> it's yeah, been a yeah, well, it's a couple of months now. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I think he varies a lot. Uh, yeah. Every time I boat by you, you are talking about something else. Yeah. Oh, maybe that, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're on YouTube too. People want to say hi. Yeah. Okay. Hada. <laughs> no, I, says hi. I, I can't remember. Well, no, it was something. Um, okay, so you discussed travel. Yeah. Where the Vikings went, and they were looking for what did they want? Why did they travel everywhere? They just wanted to see where the end of the water went, or no, they wanted to. Trade for fish, um, meats, furs, silks. Oh. Then sometimes we just took it or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but you said something no, like a. I don't. <laughs> no. Anyway, you just. You, uh, anyway, I've, there's one, but it was. Um, you were saying something about anyway. Uh, maybe it was about Normandy or something or raiding on Lindisfarne or something. And. Uh, you kind of, it was the, the way you passed it off was almost like you weren't quite entirely sorry feeling so guilty about it. Yeah. No. <laughs> or the ancestors, anyway. Yeah. No, I, I can't remember. No. No, no but to be honest, we're in winter. We're off season now. Yeah, but it's been a while. You try to teach people about how real Viking life was, not like in the series or movies. No. What because is your, you've seen Vikings TV series, this one yeah. won't. Yeah. What is the what is one of the things that bug you the most about the mostly the clothing and everyone wears armor all the time? Yeah, and we wouldn't do that no. in a real Viking village. No, well, we don't actually. We just wear a lot of wool and yeah, armor. we have armor, but we never use it. No, because we are not going to war every day. <laughs> no, we haven't been to war yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I have kind of the opposite problems with Vikings. None of them are wearing. Armor that would actually be useful yeah, yeah. when I go into battle. Yeah. Yeah. 
they're wearing basically the equivalent of a leather jacket. Yeah. Um, wouldn't do much against the sharp weapon. Those are the yeah. ones where they're left. They're what's it called? The technique where you have like leather pieces like on top leather piece and another leather piece or this way actually. Uh, like a... That technique would be called scale, but I, yeah. I don't know of. Uh, I'm. This is not my field because you have Asian and medieval armors that I know nothing about. Yeah. But I don't know of a leather scale armor. I would say that would probably not work unless you used a really solid shoe leather uh, type thing, yeah. and then you have something that is so impractical that metal would be objectively better. Yeah. Yeah. But if metal is harder to get because not every village had a blacksmith? Uh, metal is not that hard to get in the uh, in the Iron Age. Um, the people in the Vikings TV series that wear these stupid armors are mostly kings and chieftains anyway. Yeah. And I could afford gold armors if I wanted to. Huh. How common was it to find a blacksmith? You know. I would say probably pretty common because huh. uh, they absolutely need metal and you can't yeah. necessarily trust the people in the next village. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, you would probably have a blacksmith pretty much everywhere where they live more than one family. Mm. Well, they wouldn't lack from stuff to do, the blacksmiths. No. No. I, there is a story about Skallagrim, the father of Egil Skallagrimson, when he comes to Iceland. The first thing he needs to get up and running is his smithy. And mm -hmm. obviously he didn't travel with an anvil, so he finds a stone that is underwater and he wants it on land. Yeah. And uh, the story might be exaggerated, but uh, he picked it up alone and put it down somewhere. Uh, apparently, it takes 11 months to lift that stone. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you don't just guide. You have one other job here. That's pretty important. Yeah. Animal care. Yeah, animal care. Yes, yeah. we have two sheep. What kind of then, sheep are they? Uh, Gammelnorsk uh, Spelso. Which we found out means Old Norwegian Short Tail Land Race. Yeah. Yeah. And they are... Two rams, and yeah. they are uh, two and a half year old now, I think. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And yeah. they're brothers. Brother, Yeah, well, that's, at least they have the same father. Oh, okay, so brother from sure another they, mother? I'm not, I'm not sure they have the same mother. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. No, well, they're very different I'm not in color, sure but... about that, but uh, they at least... Normally, when you are breeding sheep, you have only one ram to... Yeah. Mate all the sheep. Yeah. So in a flock of sheep, everyone has almost the same father. Is it a little bit like uh, too many roosters in the hen house kind of yeah. a situation? Yeah. Yeah. These have a, they only have to be sheared once a, once a year? Yeah. Yeah. In the springtime. In the spring. And then this is used to fall off almost naturally. You could just follow behind yeah, them and pull it off. Originally, when the sheep was uh, wild. Yeah. Because all tame sheep are uh, domesticated from wild sheep and yeah. naturally they shed the fur yeah but we share it with scissors well it's a little faster and a little bit more pleasant yeah. for them instead of running behind a sheep going yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, and when we do share them they look like goats everyone yeah. everyone keeps calling them goats yeah, yeah. their horns <laughs> yeah a lot of people call them goats but because they have horns because uh, because they're rams, yeah. Yeah, normal people don't. Uh, they go like. Don't uh, are you? They are not used to see a sheep with the horns. No, that maybe that's why. Yeah. Yeah, but these are curly horns. They're starting to get some. Uh, when they first got them, they did like yeah. this, but now they're actually starting to yeah. loop. But the goats, they don't have curly horns. They have curved Straight ones. horns. They go like. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, goats, of of course, don't have wool. Wool. No. Unless they are, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, there's no woolly goats. Yeah. But we also have chickens. Yeah, chickens. How many chickens do we have? I don't remember right now. <gasps> you lost control. 13, maybe. 14. I don't know. Maybe 14, yeah. Yeah. 
because we had to get rid of a couple. And we have how many roosters? I thought we had more roosters than we did, but it turns out one of them was just really butch. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think we have two roosters. Yeah. yeah. And one of them you brought back in the front car, in, the, yeah. in this car with uh, you. I brought them back from Trondelag in the back seat of my car. How many hours is that? seven hours did it crow the whole way no okay i was Never. just wondering about that i could just see you driving yeah. seven hours in the car with a rooster crowing in the back seat no it's, it was nice oh that's good to know <laughs> and of course we do other viking stuff and we have activities like axe throwing and yeah. archery and whatever needed playing drums and yeah 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 uh axe throwing is a real fun activity but but yes, is it historically accurate? Mm. Maybe as a game. Yeah. As a game, yeah. Militarily, probably not. Uh, the Franks apparently did, but they are the only people we know about to throw axes in battle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a case of uh, you use something that is situationally appropriate. You mm. use the best tool for the job. Mm. And at the time, they are fighting the Romans, who used these big shields and tight formations. And there might be merit to using axes against that, because axes will cause more damage to shields. And uh, special axes, they use bounce around a lot when they hit the ground. Mm. So you might have more effect there uh, than you would get by using the same metal to make javelins, for instance. But in most other circumstances, I would say the javelin is uh, vastly superior to the throwing axe. Yeah. Uh, it has higher penetration. Uh, it always hits with the sharp end first. It doesn't spin in the air. Mm. And um, much longer range. Why don't we throw javelins here? It was my next question. Yeah, but I think well, you just kind of answered yeah, that. <laughs> that's the, the range is the problem there. Yeah. I but guess it'd be harder to hit a target with it, and you have to go this way. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it if we have a proper background. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not this uh, wall we have now, because we, it's very easy to throw over the yeah. wall. And Luckily, there's people. only containers on the other yeah. side. and Yeah. It was a good javelin thrower. You know, I don't know uh, what the Olympic record is, but yeah. 80 meters, 90 meters. Oh God, I could do some damage with that. We need a bigger field. Yeah. Uh, I think the Romans throw their first uh, pilum at uh, either 60 or 80 paces. That's well, shorter than a meter, but not yeah. much. Mm. I need axe throwing to be a thing because I'm good at it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when you when you go into battle and you have uh, one sword and one axe. Yeah. You don't throw away your second weapon. No, that's the thing is I'd be afraid because with it. Can I have that back? So yeah. I can... <laughs> no. Yeah. no. But um... there are some very narrow circumstances where I would say it seems right now it would be sensible to throw an axe. But yeah. uh, it's very narrow and you wouldn't bring an axe just in case one of these situations occur. No. No. But I do like to uh, impress the tourists because I am not an athletic build, shall we say. So you get these big tough bikers and uh, metal heads and they want to come and throw axes and they're throwing it super hard, but almost too hard because it's actually not a matter of how hard you throw it really. Yeah. It's about the rotation. Yeah. Uh, and then I get up there and I can barely lift the damn thing, but I can hit it every time. Yeah. And then they get frustrated. <laughs> but it's fun. It's always a fun station to watch. Uh, we got lots to catch up on now. Uh, snow wenches! Kathleen Negan agrees with me. We want wenches falling from this. They only do that in Norway. <laughs> Thrill shouting is very much rain here. Uh, let's see. Where did I catch up here now? You guys got to bring on questions because we're running out of stuff to talk about. But uh, uh, Carl, what do you do here in case there's a new one? I'm a guide and the shift leader. So I make the week plans and day plans and I guide. Hmm. I also help out with the activities. I don't like axe throwing because I'm absolutely not good at it. I can but, kick his uh, ass. It's mostly a matter of showing the tourists uh, basic safety rules, which are yeah. so basic that you occasionally forget to tell them, and then they start doing stupid things. Like throwing the axe straight up in the air? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did that but ever that, happen? That, that was an accident. That's an accident, though, yeah. yeah. But axe throwing is not safe. 
No, and the axes can't be wet. The handles yeah, should not yeah. be wet. So you can't use them in the rain. Doro is here, by the way. Well, she was here. She'll be right back anyway. So hello, Doro and Karsten, by the way. Uh, Elsa, speaking of ice, Elsa's like Elizabeth. Um, I got hit on the head from ice uh, from an overhang, and I have a mild concussion. Not fun. I got hit in the head with Thor's hammer last year about this time. I agree with you. Not fun. <laughs> no, that sounds more violent than it actually was. It was a little wooden hammer. At least we think that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, it came flying from an opposite direction. I think a kid either had one or maybe it was a rock and someone on the other side of the fence thought it was a fun idea to throw a rock over and not realizing yeah, there's people. Be, yeah. so we never really did know what hit me, but it did put a nice little gash in the head. And then you had to babysit me while I slept on your couch because you live closer to the hospital yeah. uh, in case I didn't wake up. But uh, nope, went just fine. I was awake. You fell asleep. <laughs> no, it was fun. Anyway, I didn't die. Uh and then yeah, Prime Bunny put up his Instagram so you can see it. The Vikings went sailing to get away from the family for a few months. Ha ha ha. Mm. Do we agree with this? That yeah, might be. <laughs> Considering it was, was it mostly men that went sailing or was it women too? Uh, the, mostly men in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, done whole families. Yeah. And it kind of depends on where you're going and what you're going to do when you get there. But uh, we can say there was female warriors too. Yeah, tell more about that, because we like that. Well, they found a big grave in England, and they reconstructed one of the skulls, and yeah. it turns out to be a female with all the scars. Yeah. So she had been in battle. So they could tell, because the, the wear on the muscles was only done yeah, yeah, from yeah. that kind of motion. Yeah. They could tell one was an archer for the same reason. Or was it the same case or one that you, you used to tell that story? Mm. About uh, that, they could see that the um, that's lighter. That's uh, yeah. So it's a different, different dead body. Different body, yeah. different time. Yeah. But uh, but female. And uh, no, in this case, they're male. Uh, or at least I think all of them are. Um, this the, is the uh, uh, English archers yeah. from the uh, 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 the War of the Roses and the uh, Hundred Year War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because they used these ridiculously powerful bows, uh, 150, 200 pounds easily. Mm. And uh, you have to have a very bizarre physique to even use those. And um, the, the muscle connect, the connection points for the muscles in this area is enormously much bigger than the ones on the other side. Mm. Yeah. So that's um, how they could tell. And uh, most likely, they started out with the strongest bow I could handle when I were about five. And as soon as I get comfortable with that, I get a more powerful bow. And then you keep going until they are 17, 18, and it's time to go to war. Hmm. And uh, yeah. Mary Rose is the boat. Yeah, that I found Mary some Rose? of the yeah. actual, yeah. Uh, actual bows. Yeah. Uh, so it's so well preserved that you could actually measure the pound of them. Hmm. Huh. I will uh, show you a little needle binding for a second. I have to, I ran out of yarn, so I have to add on a new length. This is how I do it. I split the ends and then um, you can uh, interlock them a little bit. If you can see that. So they actually go into each other. This is 100% wool uh, and it's not super washed. That's a big difference. So you can use water or spit the Viking way. Not very Corona friendly. I'm gonna no, <laughs> just kidding. And then you rub it together a lot. Uh, a lot of people think it might not work, but it turns out they were just tickling the damn thing. You really have to use some rage and then it becomes one, but it's still weak. So if you pull too hard on it, it will come undone. Anyway, I thought I'd show that while I was at that point. But you do have to pull the first few stitches through carefully to get beyond that point. Um, Drea says she's seen people in SCA and in the SCA uh, Society for Creative Anachronism. Creative Anachronism, that's right. Um, quite similar to Viking reenactment, but they have a wider uh, range of eras. Anyway, but uh, dress as a Viking and use the armor with leather scales and shingles. I've seen that too. Yeah, it's pretty common. Because it's um, cheaper or? The typical one is the Asian looking one, you know, the one Rogan has. Yeah. 
uh, that is based on a find from Birka, but the find in Birka was of metal. B I R K A in Sweden. Uh, yeah. There might be a case for uh, lamellar uh, metal armors in the Viking Age. I am um, even the solid the rough ones like the one Roger has. Yeah. I don't. That will maybe stop most cuts, yeah. but I will not do much to a stab. No. Mm. So. Yeah, you can stop a uh, cut from a sword or it will, yeah. kni knife, but uh, from a stab straight in. They're also kind of stitched down a little bit, so it's not too easy to go under yeah. a panel. Am I remembering that right, or is it stitched this way? Yeah, yes, they are stitched, but... Uh, or is it easy to just kind of go under a layer? No, you would basically have to... You would have to be nose to nose with him and then stab straight up to do that. But... Um, that's not something you would be concerned about in a normal battle anyway. I'd be more worried uh, about the axe swinging at my head, but... I'm, uh, I'm against axes. I don't think it would save you either, because the axe has so much kinetic energy that mm. it would probably cut through. Yeah. And I also think that somebody who really knows what they're doing with a sharp sword can cut through it, but then you're talking about the perfect cut, um, mm. when you have perfect edge alignment and move it just right. Chainmail, but uh, whatever you your yeah. armor yes. is, there are some someone that uh, make a weapon that can pen penetrate that armor. Yeah, that's true. Whatever the spear. you do, and in the end you have uh, bullets or, or gunpowder, and then no yeah. armor can stop. No, but that's no. fortunately after uh, Viking Age. <laughs> after uh, yeah. the year sixteen hundred or thereabouts, armor is still in use to a small extent, but it's mostly a curiosity. Yeah. Um, like uh, French, uh, oh, what are I called again? Uh, Carrossiers? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones with the breastplate. Yeah. Uh, by the way, write in there what you're making and I'll tell you what I'm making. It's a neck warmer. <laughs> I finished my socks last week. They're too big for my feet, but fortunately, some people here have bigger feet. <laughs> no, but uh, chainmail. What is uh, chainmail, ringmail? When does that come in? To, um... uh, it's been in existence since at least 500 years before Christ. Uh, yeah, was that often used in the Viking Age? Uh, it would be horrendously expensive. Yeah. Uh, but it was probably used a lot more than the archaeology gives impression of. Uh, we have only found one mm -hmm. that is somewhat whole. Uh, and um, but there are many references to them in the sagas, yeah. and uh, they are so useful and good that if you can afford one, even if you take ninety percent of your resources, mm -hmm. if you even smell the whiff of a battle somewhere over the horizon, you spend those, these resources. Mm. So, um, uh, with good panic underneath, uh, you are pretty much immune to impact and you are completely immune to cuts. The only thing you have to worry about is a really, really powerful thrust. Spear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you see a heavy set man with a sharp spear running downhill with uh, wind and sun in his back, you might want to step aside. But aside from that, you can pretty much ignore anything. Uh -huh. We have a helmet, uh, which also brings up a lot of questions. One, there was only one helmet, or no? Are there two found in Scandinavia? Um, one in Viking. Scandinavia, but the yarn helmet in England is Scandinavian. That's the other one, because we have one where we put ringmail on the back, but that is uh, we're guessing there. Why? Why did we do that? Because the neck protection, um, and uh, I would say that, that guess is probably correct. That it would have had a uh, ring mile hanging from the uh, back side of it. I think mm. they made that guess because there was little holes along the back that looked like they could support. Yeah, I know. yeah. But I don't know. And didn't they find some rings mm. along with the helmet? They found the entire chainmail yeah. in the same grave. Yeah. And that's oh, wow. uh, the only helmet and the only chainmail is from the same grave. So yeah. what I am guessing is that we have one. <laughs> 
one family in Norway who has a weird tradition of burying people with useful equipment and everybody else just keeps it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not going to need that, is he? Oh, but oh, oh, that's another topic. Boy, I got to catch up on chat. But how common would it be to, um, say, go into somebody's grave after you buried them, etc., and take away their mail and things of use, uh, plundering? How it common would that be? Because seems to be pretty common. Yeah. Um, there is, uh, I haven't read up on it lately, but there is uh, several sets of speculation around it. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, supernatural. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, something bad has happened, and we buried grandfather with all his weapons. Um, that might not have been a good idea because it might be him that is coming around and uh, haunting us. Yeah. So let's go into the grave and take away his weapons ah. so that he stops doing this. Mm. That is one. Think about that when you die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other one is, uh, uh, is it Oseberg that was plundered like... Uh, it was uh, plundered, I think, yeah. Uh, pretty shortly after she, uh, the queen was buried. Yeah. And that might be uh, because power structures. Yeah. So when somebody else takes over, they uh, basically they are not tied to the land in the same way. It's not their ancestors that are buried there. So they go, yeah, well, nice grave you have here, but I'm pretty sure you don't need all this gold. I could use it. Yeah. Hmm. Did the one in Halden where they're digging, I have so many stupid questions and I'm not even uh, <laughs> after read chat, but the one in Halden they're digging now. Um, Yelling. Mm. Yelling. Yelling. Grave is that what it's called anyway, but the Halden, it's near the border of, it's very close to the border of Sweden in Norway, but was that one also had no signs of plunder? I don't know. About because I think the, the yeah, no, I'm just curious if anybody read about that. I know that the, what the heck is that long bottom of the boat, the keel. Yeah, the uh, keel is intact anyway, but they found out that when they started digging it, not only is it intact, but they need to dig it up fast because it's already showing signs of mold. Yeah. But other ones don't mm. last because they've been plundered and they've been exposed to mold. So the thing with the Halden, I think it's uh, layers of graves there because the yeah. old, they, I think the oldest part of uh, what they have found is from the Bronze Age. Oh, wow. Because they have, there have been people living there for, um, long long time long before the viking age oh yeah it's flatter there it's much easier yeah, to live so, there so they built houses up on other houses or because yeah. where they're building now is farmland also basically yeah, yeah. they had to pay them to halt yeah. so if you find a viking house Farming. and maybe yeah. under the viking house is a house from the bronze age this is like close encounters of the third kind all over yeah. <laughs> you get mm, poltergeist yeah. in your house because yeah. you decided to build on a grave um so viking they, I, think, uh, I think they found uh, remaining so houses from different time periods one thing i thought was kind of interesting though is because we've uh, i've driven by there i live not too far about from there about 45 minutes but i've driven by there quite a bit and there's this huge mound and you'd swear to god there was a viking ship in there oh. that's not where they found it they found it in the flat part off to the side oh. which i was kind of surprised because you wouldn't think that it would i mean it was so flat there you wouldn't yeah. think that they actually had buried it level but they did mm -hmm. so it's kind of impressed to see that uh, by the way, Charlotte says that she's learning so much from you guys. So best day of the week. Wow. You're teaching me too. I get to ask all the questions. I can just pretend to be naive because I am. <laughs> uh, Prime says mohair from goats. Oh yeah, also yeah. camel too, isn't it? No, no, that's uh, cashmere. Um, yeah, cashmere also is. A and goat 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 or pigora goats for wool there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the white goats I've seen around here, though, that hair is so short and yeah, yeah. fine. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, the sheep that we have, is that the oldest breed of sheep in the world? Those no, old Norwegian short tail lambs? That's... They say it's the most authentic Vikings we yeah, have in, in the village. It though. But Norway, if but... it had been the oldest type of sheep in the world, then Georg would have been screaming it to every tourist. This is true. Uh, yeah. So yeah, okay, so maybe not. No. no, I don't think so. Trivia for next week. What is the oldest breed? Uh, then I think you go to uh, there's a wild sheep called Mifflon or something. Oh yeah. And there, there are there are still the wild sheep. From that like a not because it used to be like a tiny horse race that died out a long time ago too. Yeah. From yeah. Iceland. So. So it's, it's kind of cool to see uh, if there's still some breeds old, that have lasted. If that you long. if you're talking about oldest breed or oldest domestic breed, that's two different things. Okay, I want both now. <laughs> well, the, 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 
It's, <laughs> you can have it's homework. Impossible, it's impossible to say. Yeah. Um, yeah probably. Yeah, but, Maybe uh, not. It kind uh, of depends yeah. because I will have uh, pro, uh, bones for sure, probably DNA for uh, yeah, yeah. things that were domest domesticated a long time ago. Yeah. But then you have the argument if, well, if it is how similar does it have to be to be the same breed yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Mm. It's like asking how, what is the oldest breed of dogs, then I would say wolf. Yeah, but did they actually find out? <laughs> but actually, I did, no, no, really, I think we mentioned this once before, though, but didn't they find something that actually may or may not connect wolves and uh, dogs? By species, there was, I think they found... Uh, yeah, that might be. That, that collection is pretty obvious. Yeah, but then, anyway. A dog is just a wolf who is too lazy to hunt for itself. So. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, some Can you get these... it for me? I'll lead very nice to you. <laughs> some of these dog breeds we have are very close to wolves. I'll keep your feet like, warm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the huskies, like, yeah, and, huskies um, and malamutes and, and stuff. Like mm. uh, more on the wool, though. Uh, random asks, are they double coated? Our wool, our yeah. sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they have, have a short uh, fiber. Short fiber closest to the skin. Is this one? Yeah. Yeah. And then they have longer fiber on the outside. This is Runa's. So they're well because it's it's like Angela's hair. <laughs> I noticed. Yeah. Anyway, hi Angela, if you're watching. So it's a fur, but if you look really close to the base of the skin, it's like these shorter fibers in here, and they are not very long. Uh, but these ones you would use to make clothing with because they're also softer, or you would use them this way in weaving uh, as well. Uh, but these long ones. They're a little bit more coarse, but they're a lot stronger, and we'd use them this way in the loom because they would support the weights from the warp weighted loom, so they'd have to be a lot tougher. But if you made the whole item with just this, it would be a bit itchier. Yeah. But if you are going to make a sail, yeah, then, then you use the long ones because they are strong and more water resilient. Yep, because yeah. you can just shake it, yeah. and then the water will just come right off. Yeah. And then the, the wool fibers, you'd have to spin it a lot tightlier too, I think. Hmm. Um, let's see if there was another. Okay, we'll get to that question after. Oh, speaking of chickens, do you have to rub a wax-based salva into your hens to uh, combs to keep them from getting frostbite? Yeah, hmm. uh, you know they have the red part. Yeah. Do you have to like put anything yeah, on there yeah, to keep no, them from getting frostbite? We don't do that. No, but we do have a heated hen house yeah, for yeah. them uh, because chicken lives matter. <laughs> so, no, that's I didn't know they did that actually, but that's something they probably could have. Yeah. Yeah, they stay pretty Maybe. warm though. They do really well in the cold weather that, here. That comb is full of blood, so that's, I is suppose it? they keep warm. And they're Icelandic chickens, so yeah. I suppose they're more. Yeah, because that's why it's red because it's full of blood. Oh. Probably don't want to cut it there then. No. <laughs> really make the thing bleed. Uh, blacksmiths everywhere says Prime. That's why so many people have Smith in their last name in the UK and the United States too, actually. But they're probably, yeah, that's true. And then when Smith is that like a common uh, last uh, name in Norwegian too? No, or part really, of it? But something? We don't generally take uh, Norwegian surnames are generally not taken from occupations. I don't know if we have any. No. Uh. Some people in Sunmura has the last name Bunda, which means fire. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's uncommon. Yeah, but we, uh, we yeah, add one. something in it. Yeah, you have the William well, Berg. Yeah, maybe we are more like a uh, name, surname are from places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have the family ones. Yeah. Uh, it could be Runa, Runes, Son, Runa Son, or whatever. That's kind of a weird one. But Jon, John, anyway. And then you Jun. get Johnson, Jun's yeah, son, yeah. which is John's son, or yeah, Jun's yeah. daughter, John's daughter. Yeah. Um, uh, that kind of thing. I know, uh, talking about Smiths and Smeds, I know a yeah. name called Smeds Plus. Oh. So they, there was a Smith there. Oh. Huh. So they took the name from that place. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to, I don't know, you guys know the last names better than I do, but. Uh, it's indirectly an occupation name. In um, Sondal, there is a farm called Mester Plus. Mm. The master's place. place yeah. uh, that's because apparently they had a lot of crime in uh, uh, Songdal back in the day. So they had um, 
full-time executioner. Yeah. That's and something for you. Yeah, <laughs> no. uh, the white die paid him was basically giving him this form. Yeah, you can have this form, but then you have to kill people when we tell you to. Yeah. You don't want to do that anymore? No. <laughs> no. Just kidding. Uh, there's uh, more questions here. This is good. I like this. We have lots of questions now. Um, just kind of try to sort them a little bit. How many Vikings? This is Frigg, by the way. Hello, Frigg Melon. Melanois, I think, or Melanois. How many Vikings reenactment villages are there in Norway? Oh, that's a good question. Is there any? Uh, are we the, we're not the only village, but there's uh, other, yeah. we got a lot of houses. We, don't I think call, we are the only village. Yeah. Uh, Avalsnes comes close, but they are. Uh, that's where Borgvin Market is, isn't it? No, that's uh, no. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Avalsnes is a farm near Stavanger, near Haugesund. Yeah. Near Haugesund. And then, um, uh, it used to be a uh, Kungsgård King's farm, and they kind of reconstructed it. Yeah. Was it Harald Hårfagre or that lived there, or Harald Fairhaired is uh, The way I understand it, somebody who is not the king yeah. uh, is the farmer at the place. But yeah. when the king stops by, they yeah, basically yeah. have to make sure that there is enough food yeah. and bear for him and his man. Yeah. Hmm. The story of Avalsnes, the most famous story about it, is uh, from Ola Tregosson's time. Yeah. And it's kind of a funny story. Uh, Tell it. We got stories. You got time. Mm. Uh, Ola Tregosson stops at Avalsnes and he notices burial mounds near the farm. And he is kind of interested in what these mounds are. Uh, Ola Tregosson is a Christian king, and his uh, mission in life is to make Norway into a Christian country. Uh, and he has this uh, big party uh, sometime in the winter. A tall, one-eyed man shows up and sits and uh, talks to the king uh, most of the night because he's very wise and knows a lot about uh, a lot about a lot. And uh, Olav asks him who is buried in these uh, burial mounds. And he gives the story of uh, the farm, the people who uh, used to own it. And um, I don't remember all the details here, but in one of the burial mounds, there is a cow. Because one of them had a magic cow that he really liked, that he buried in a normal burial mound. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then uh, the king goes to bed, and while he is sleeping, he is dreaming of either God or St. Peter comes to him with that. Uh, what are you doing? Do you have any idea who you have been talking to? So the king wakes up and he runs down to the kitchen and says, okay, the guy I was talking to most of the night, did he bring any food? Yeah, he brought a few uh, uh, rib sides that we just added with all the other food. Okay, take all of the food, take it out and bury it deep and don't eat any of it. Because that was surely Odin trying to prevent me from making Norway into a Christian country. <laughs> okay, I got a lot here. Actually, they're really good. I, my favorite here so far is Kathleen said, oh, you asked for questions because you're running out of things to talk about. You're actually having no talking problems. Uh, I like <laughs> Kathleen. She knows uh, me too well. It turns out that uh, diary of the mouth is a skill. <laughs> anyway, um, Runa, you have a message in here too. Oh, crap. How did I do that? I made my screen super huge. Not technically savvy. How did I do that? Okay. Uh, you're Heidi. Not yeah. your sister Heidi, but the other yeah, Heidi. Hi. Uh, Runa, your gang is here. Both Ireland towards said, oh, Runa. And Iroh said uh, that she misses Ronia because she is so oh, sweet. Ronia is his Ronia dog. Misses you too. Ronia Runa is up there. And yeah, she's in the yeah, house. Yeah. Hi, hi. Yeah. And... Uh, there was, um, I think it was Elfia, yeah, in one of your videos, I know you're going to hate this question, but you have to do it anyway, bite the bullet. In one of your videos, the roofs had what looked like grass. What is that all about? Why do we have grass on the roofs? That's actually a common thing in Norway. Yeah. Uh, we don't really hate the question. We just get asked it like three yeah. times a day, every yeah. day for all of summer. There are no such things as bad questions. <laughs> the grass roofs is because they use peat from peat bogs um, as roofing material. Yeah. If you cut the turf on the lawn, you'll get something about this thick with interwoven grass roots uh, that is mostly plant material. But if you do the same thing in a peat bog, you get something that is this thick or thicker. Yeah. And as it is mostly plant material, it's very good insulation. 
the downside is that it's pretty heavy. So you'll notice that every house in Norway who has these roofs uh, have really solid wall construction. And it holds moisture like forever. So we notice in the, uh, in the village when it hasn't been raining for about a week, it will still be dripping from the corners of some of the, some of the houses. Yeah. So um, in the Viking Age, they would use several layers of uh, woven birch bark between the roof, uh, the rafters of the building, and the peat on the roof. Because if not, then uh, the moisture sets into the rafters and uh, it rots, and you get your ridiculously heavy roof on your head. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with this birch bark in insulation, it lasts a little bit longer. It doesn't last forever, but yeah. when it starts to break down, you just have you open your bear and invite all of the neighbors over and you fix it as quickly as possible. I have that these days, I have something called plastic that apparently works better than birch bark. Yeah. But the thing with the birch bark with this uh, bog on top, and the bog is always wet, it never rottens, because to make no. it rotten you need air. Yeah, that's true. So when the birch bark is constantly wet, it doesn't rotten. The house you're using has a grass roof, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and the one I have too, and neither one of them leak. No. We have the ones that think that we have a little bit of leaking issue are the ones that are just yeah. shingled. Yeah. Um, no, they're good roofs. They're really uh, good. It's warm too. And birch bark is much cheaper than wooden tiles or stone tiles or whatever. Yeah. Mm. So that was good. Okay, next one. Um, it, looks cool. oh yeah, it does look cool. But they still do it today uh, yeah. in cabins and things. They'll still yeah. do it. Uh, Drea writes, uh, do you have artists at Goodwang and doing things like beadworking, Rosemont, or tablet weaving? Uh, we have a beadworker. Her name is Lisa Nielsen. And I wrote her down in the chat. I hope it says uh, at Trollsmed, T-O-R-N-I-T-R-O-L-L-S-M-E-D, which means Trollsmith. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, she makes beads. And you can see them on Instagram. She makes the glass beads herself in the historical way. And uh, we do have a bunch of tablet weavers, but uh, you might be able to see them on the Viking Valley uh, Instagram. There's a bunch of them there. It's, it's too many to name, so I might insult people if I only name one and not five. Well, what is the, what's the third? Rose mauling. That's not uh, actually Viking, no, is it? that's no, much later. That's, hmm. that's seven, six, seven hundred years. But it's yeah. a beautiful Norwegian technique, and Norway, yeah. Norway's famous for it. But basically what you're doing is you're loading up different colors of paint on the brush, and then when you do this with it, you smear the colors in a shaded fashion it's really quite cool uh so it's worth looking for do they have any kind of a painting tradition or anything or technique or is it just the uh, we don't have uh, we have to check that for next time maybe yeah but we don't much have any painting I, from the viking age not just uh, rune sticks we, we know they have paint because yeah uh, but I don't know if anything painted with a pattern or any no. attempt of making a portrait or any kind of decor no. Yeah. We have uh, wood carvings and I've yeah, lots of wood carvings. But uh, they say uh, we Viking ships that we are uh, normally are used to see as brown or blackish. They, I heard, they had been a uh, lot of colorfuls. I colorful read that Viking too somewhere. Ships. There's one on display in France, or maybe it's Sweden as well. That has maybe Birka. Yeah. That has like at least three different colors yeah. striped on the boat. And yeah. Like in the Osterberg tapestry, also shows it. You can see both yellow and or the Bayou tapestry, yeah. greenish ships, Viking ships. Yeah. But if that's true, I don't know. No. Uh, probably. Oh, yeah. the Bayou tapestry shows. Yeah, they're striped yeah. ones. But either they're taking some create artistic creativity yeah, the there. Bayou. Yeah, yeah. Or they're basing it on what they've saw yeah. and heard. That one we will have to look more into. Yeah. Uh, where is that one? Kathleen Egan says, "Am I allowed to come and volunteer here next year, or do, and if I get, assuming I get vaccinated?" Well, the corona thing adds a whole new spin on there. I'm assuming vaccinations are going to be a requirement at some point. I don't know, we haven't thought that far yet. Uh, we need new, new people. We need, yeah. we need new people, no, yeah. Uh, if it's okay with uh, the Norwegian government to let uh, non-Norwegians in, I'm sure we don't have a problem. The borders are closed now almost yeah. completely. but Yeah, but won't last forever. Yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, normally if you go to, and I will write that one down to, um, you, is it, uh, .com and look up Freeman. You can fill out an application there to apply to be a Freeman. And that's, uh, basically the other name we have for a volunteer. Uh, and then they will 
go through your application process there. And if approved, you get to have a trial uh, here to stay in the village. And if we really like you, you can do it again. If we don't like you, well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but we uh, we have a lot of houses to fill here and uh, you can even stay in a tent here. We have a market every year, uh, the Good Bong and Viking Market. Whether we have it or not this year is undetermined. Uh, things get scheduled and canceled immediately all across Norway, yeah. so we don't know. But um, they will definitely post that on uh, vikingvalley.no on Instagram, for example, if that's the case. And then, so stay tuned for there. But yes, volunteers are something we always need. Hmm. Everything's different this year, though. Uh, I saw Frigg was making a neck warmer. I think it was Frigg, a neck warmer, too. Yay. We're all going to be warm in the next now. Uh, Heidi asked a question that I needed to mention, too. She said, have you seen Olaf since last time? Um, we're still in Netflix, but tell us about that, because you have seen it. Yeah, Olaf is uh, Christoph, and he, he is making, he's an actor, pro, Norwegian actor. He was in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like, uh, was the tournament. He was in uh, Vikings Giant as Spain, well, wasn't he? Giant Spain. Mm, not in Vikings, but in uh, The Last Kingdom. I thought he was, oh, Last Kingdom, yeah. yeah. That was the other one. Yeah. And he is making a three-episode uh, series about uh, Olaf Haraldsson or Saint Olaf. Yeah. And Saint Olaf is a hero for him. Mm -hmm. But in the end of the last uh, episode, he's not that much of a hero anymore. Are you giving a spoiler? <laughs> <laughs> this story is a thousand years old. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there are no spoilers. It's no, just a matter. No. How accurate is it? Do you think? Uh, I. I uh, they have talked to a lot of experts and profession. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, experts. And uh, th there is a story that uh, Olaf Haraldsson or Saint Olaf tear down Dondon Bridge. Yeah. But then it it shows up that Dondon Bridge was never tear tear down at all. No. And maybe it was just a uh, harbor or uh, the docks that was teared down and not the bridge not the actual bridge i thought the song went london bridge is falling yeah, yeah. down but yeah but maybe that's just uh could be story. just a thing but how many episodes are out and there, are there, there are coming? three there are only three yeah are they gonna make more no, no because they have completed the story yeah if they get to stick list it's hard to make more episodes about uh... yeah yeah <laughs> And so your girlfriend, Heidi, not your sister, Heidi, why is she keen about this show? Yeah, she was in the show. She is mm -hmm. one of the warriors at Stiklista. Yeah, she's got a lot of pictures of her with a bloody face. It's yeah. not real blood, or is it? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Let's we'll see how much she actually gave for the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and so that's we cool. can see her as a corpse and some glimpse alive, too. How does that affect you, seeing her as a corpse? Just, you know, going to throw that out there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> And then it's only a movie, film, or it's not. It's not not for real. <laughs> no. Okay. So you're not like a emo. No. Okay. Good. <laughs> no emo Vikings. <laughs> uh, Charlotte says we should go on a Viking Valley chat tour, looking for all the vi things Viking. Absolutely. I kind of think that's what we're doing. Uh, then there's a little bit more chat about the different kinds of sheep. One called a muffin. 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 Yeah, muffin. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. it. Uh, Doris is in German, and the names. Uh, Doris is in German, the name also is common. Schmidt, or Schmidt, and Müller, Miller, we also have Minor. Uh, is one of the most common surnames. Uh, Drea says, when I studied abroad in Ireland, we lived in thatch and roof cottages and burned peat. Yeah, I think you spelled that right. Uh, from the bog, would the roofs be flammable? Peat roofs, are they flammable? Uh, if they are extremely dry, theoretically, yeah. yes, but... Uh... Oh, but we have a method of fixing dry roofs here. How yeah. do we do that? Yeah, we get a hose and spray them with water. If you uh, go... <laughs> one summer, it was very hot and dry. And yeah. the, the, I'm not sure they completely dried out because the grass was still alive. Yeah. So the, the grass didn't die. But this is uh, this is not the real bug grass, actually. Not bu bug? Well, this, this is... Uh, Artificially made. Oh, okay. Um, yes and no. Uh, yeah. There was grass seeds in it when they were lied, but we had the uh, unprecedented drought in the period when. Yeah, yeah. Was... yeah that was super. We had like no so fires. At could least be... on yeah. uh, the sunny side of the of many of the houses, all of the grass seeds died. Yeah. So whatever is growing there now is whatever seeds has blown onto the roof afterwards. Yeah. 
Mm. But uh, when we get this, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure where this uh, this uh, turf comes from, but I think it's from they they make it in or in Hallingdal, mm. some of it, and they grow it, and it's not. Like in the turf, they in the turf they grow for a thousand years, but these are grown much quicker. Mm. So it's not so not, instant peat. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's one and thing. Yeah, yeah. The, this this peat is not uh, as thick as uh, mm. one meter, like uh, real bug, because we, in Norway we are not allowed to take out bug yeah. turf because. Because of um, the fines and things in there. No, it's because of uh, climate things. Uh, and it, oh yeah, it yeah, yeah. Takes uh, hundreds of years yeah. for it to basically grow back. Yeah. We're gonna have to talk about yard room another day too. Yeah. That effect, but that's too big of a story for now. Because uh, there is uh, when you take uh, part of grass out from the swamps or turf. Yeah. It gets uh, it's uh, dark. And it's only soil left mm. that affects the climate or the warm reflection or whatever it is. Mm, it causes erosion at least. Yeah. And uh, so but, but the dark, dark, the dark color uh, is, uh, attracts the sun more than. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is good. If you yeah. go further down on Instagram, probably about halfway down on my Instagram, there yeah. is there's I posted ten waterfalls. Yeah. From Gudvangen, and the right. 10th waterfall may or may not be man made. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's you sitting on the roof of the hose. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that one's <laughs> worth looking up. So now we're out of time, but we've got some questions that we definitely need to bring up next time. Um, yeah. One is uh, Do you know why the national tartan of Norway is Sinclair? I have to look that one up. National. National tartan of Norway is Sinclair. Let's have to look that one up. Is that the Scottish mercenary? When I think of tartan, I'm thinking the oh, plaid thing. No, but... no, don't go on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check that one out for next week because it's going to. Uh, where's Virginia been? We miss her too. She has a different working schedule. So, uh, but we definitely miss her. Uh, until then, you just have to deal with these guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Another one I is. Can do uh, like yeah, he can do the eyebrow trick. No, All we need is like a. As well as Virginia. Nobody's got eyebrows like Virginia. Um, she can. She will own that one. Uh, woad painting on people like the Celts, I'm assuming. So that one will have to go in and see if they did anything like that or tattoos, etc. Uh, we we did talk tattoos about tattoos is likely. Uh, painting is uh, mm. one of the yeah, sources describes them as painted, but he mm. might have been talking about tattoos. Mm. Yeah, uh, and I'm not, uh, I have heard. Uh, I'm not sure if it's correct, but I think it is. Uh, that I have tattooing tools from the Viking Age, which I would say is a very strong indicator that I actually have tattoos. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't know for sure. Mm. BFD98 has a comment about Norse mythology. Greg is here next week. He had a crash in his schedule this week, but he will be here next week, and I will save that one for him. Um, somebody's got to eat something, so do we. I'm making them grilled cheese, authentic American uh, grilled cheese with ketchup. Um, okay, but uh, we will, uh, I'll go through these last questions, especially this one we'll save for the next time too. Uh, uh, or you can say, shout it out real fast. Can you say which movies our shows do a bad job of Viking history? Vikings. Vikings TV series in general? Yeah. I like it for entertainment value though. They are, they are using names that are from the sagas, but they have these people doing things that I never did, done yeah. making up relations between them. Yeah. Mm. So father and son becomes brothers. People who are not related becomes brothers. It's uh, Carl ripped his hair out. He was completely bald. Yeah. That yeah. was after one episode. <laughs> no. um, there is a village called Kattegat, and Kattegat, uh, yeah. you know where Kattegat is. It's very hard to live there. It's mm. water, unless you are a fish. <laughs> unless you're a fish, it's in the southern part I, of the Oslo Fjord. I tried watching it a long time ago. I saw the first episode. They live in Kattegat. It's a piece of sea. You flunk in geography. Uh, oh, no. They have a sword lying in the fireplace for some reason. Yeah. And it's white hot. That's uh, over 1200 degrees. So what fuck kind of food are you making in this fireplace? <laughs> so you <laughs> flunk you met did. metallurgy. <laughs> and you very much flunk history. Uh, they are also 
I know about e the East because I go and plunder in the East, and that seems to be the Baltic countries. Uh, they haven't really occurred to them that it might be something to the West. And you broke the Carl. is never ma mentioned. <laughs> so we're living somewhere in the water on the border of the great uh, Holy Roman Empire, but they've never been there. We don't know. Maybe there are people in the South. It's. it's <laughs> yeah, I know. So maybe we have to get him to watch one more episode. I like it for entertainment value. So okay, and uh, other than Vikings, which one do you don't like? Don't like for authenticity. Oh, it's uh, I. It's much better than Vikings. It's the Lost Kingdom. Yeah, but that one actually turned out. You didn't die on that one. You, no, you made it through. It, it's perfect by comparison. There's yeah. still a lot of things yeah, wrong yeah. with it, but it's not as wrong as Vikings. Mm. I don't know if there is any good ones. Ones that are probably most accurate. Or and you have the 13th warrior with uh, Antonio yeah. Banderas. Yeah, who plays uh, even or is based on Eben Fodland. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Uh, no, there are some elements of that one that is very good and authentic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then mm -hmm. you see people wearing roof tiles as well. Rubner was yeah. cute. <laughs> yeah. No, we hope to get a real viking movie one day we can see what more we can find uh, we can list we can find a list of a whole bunch of viking movies and uh, go through one by one what we think and everything from charles um, Heston and uh, <laughs> yeah well that's that ruined the whole viking mm. environment when they put horns on the helmets and wings yeah the wings. Valkyria, yeah, yeah. Like... yeah but the, the it's the what movie vikings with uh kirk douglas yeah that's the one i was thinking yeah, by the way, yeah, uh, yeah. horns on the helmets, and that ruined uh, Norway for the rest of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they mentioned thirteen four years as well. Yes, that's a guilty pleasure. I liked it too. Okay, but now we're in overtime, and we got lots of fun stuff to bring up next week. So, thanks for playing with us. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> we'll see you. Oops, Saturday next week. By the way, Saturday same time. And stay away from Pathfinder. Stay away. What's? Ah, uh, it's, it's <laughs> There is a Norwegian version. <laughs>